I call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dodge. Here. Commissioner Laborman. Here. Commissioner Rice. Here. Let us all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we have two presentations this morning, or this afternoon, this afternoon. And the first one is National Apprenticeship Week. Uh, Greg West and Eric Gray. Um, I have a, we have a proclamation for them, and I will read it. So if you want to come up to the podium. And um, on behalf of my fellow commissioners and I, we make this proclamation that 2022 marks the 85th anniversary of the National Apprenticeship Act. National Apprenticeship Week is celebrating its eighth anniversary of raising awareness of the vital role that registered apprenticeships provide in creating opportunities by allowing apprentices to earn while they learn and preparing a pathway to good quality jobs and well-paying careers in Montgomery County and across our nation. Registered apprenticeship programs enable employers to develop and train their future workforce while offering career seekers affordable paths to secure high paying jobs. Montgomery County recognizes the role of registered apprenticeship in expanding opportunities in our workforce that are inclusive of individuals who have been historically underserved, marginalized, and adversely affected by persistent poverty and inequality, thus providing a path for all qualified individuals, including women, youth, people of color, rural communities, justice-involved individuals, and individuals with disabilities to become apprentices and contribute to America's industriousness. Montgomery County recognizes the ap registered apprenticeship, a proven and industry-driven industry training model, can train our workforce and build a pipeline into good quality jobs in order to address our nation's pressing workforce challenges, such as rebuilding our country's infrastructure, addressing critical supply chain demands, supporting a clean energy workforce, modest, modernizing our cyber, oh, I'm having trouble today, <laughs> uh, modernizing our cybersecurity response and responding to the care economy issues. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Montgomery County, Ohio, on this 15th day of November, 2022, does hereby declare November 14th through the 20th as National Apprenticeship, Apprenticeship Week mm -hmm. in Montgomery County, and it's signed by myself, Carolyn Rice, Judy Dodge, and Debbie Lieberman. And we do truly applaud all the apprenticeships. I think every bit of this proclamation really declares, we all know that we have real workforce issues in this country, I think even worldwide, uh, and that this is one, not the only solution, but part of the solution in order that we match uh, willing and able and qualified individuals to get the training and the experience they need for all the many, many jobs, and we need everybody to be their best in their jobs. So we join you in celebrating and would welcome your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would just like to uh, take a couple minutes to, to thank uh, the county um, and, and, and joining apprentices, sponsors, administrators, uh, local, state, and federal agencies in recognizing the National Apprenticeship Week. Um, today with this proclamation. Um, we're thrilled to have this week this recognized and hopeful that today will uh, inform others of apprenticeship opportunities right here in the Miami Valley. And on behalf of all involved in the registered apprenticeship program from apprentices to the program sponsors, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Sure. We'll take a picture. Do you guys have it? I didn't want to cut you. Short. No, no, Could no. I, I'm okay. just thankful that I we have this. Right. Yeah, you said it all <laughs> in that very long <laughs> proclamation. But worthy. Definitely worthy.
next is quite exciting as well. Uh, it is National Adoption Day, and Judge Bra David Brannon, Lynn Cooper, Tyler Wright, and I think Craig Ricketts is here to um, come up to the podium. We also have a proclamation for you. And we like long proclamations for worthy causes. <laughs> we like to hear them. <laughs> All right. Uh, my fellow commissioners and I do proclaim Montgomery County recognizes the importance of giving children permanent, safe, and loving families through adoption. More than 115,000 children in the United States foster care system are waiting to be adopted. More than 2,900 children in Ohio are waiting for permanent families. We just need to match them up with loving people. Uh, to help find forever families for these children, the Montgomery County Probate Court will open their doors on November 18th to finalize the adoptions of local children and join other organizations to celebrate all adoptions. This effort, along with similar celebrations in all 50 states, will offer children the chance to live with stable and loving families and encourage other dedicated individuals to make a powerful difference in the lives of a child through <coughs> foster care <coughs> adoption. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Montgomery County, Ohio, encourages all citizens to come together and recognize National Adoption Day and does hereby designate November 18th, 2022 as National Adoption Day in Montgomery County. It is signed by myself, uh, my colleagues, Judy Dodge and Debbie Lieberman. And uh, I've been to these occasions. I'm, I will give you a chance to talk, I promise. Um, but they are very heartfelt occasions um, in all good ways. And I know that it's one of those wonderful, wonderful events that the probate court is able to host. And so we look forward to joining you on November 8th to celebrate and observe the joining of these families. And we can only reach out to other families in our community who could qualify and find space for a child that can totally change the trajectory of their lives and for generations <coughs> to come. So thank you for all you do, and can't wait to hear what you have to say about the day. First off, um, a sincere thank you to the, to the county commissioners on down, um, Director Ricketts. We couldn't do it without you, and, and you do. You cram a lot of emotion into those 15 minutes if you haven't observed them before. They're, they're pretty special. Um, with that, uh, Commissioner Wright, you specifically have supported me every step of the way from taking office um, in every initiative. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Commissioner Colbert, I appreciate it. Um, there will be 14 children being adopted out, including five teenagers. Oh, so wow. Thank you. And that's, uh, that's, more, that's about double what we did last year, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Um, again, from, on behalf of Children Services, uh, thank you to the commissioners, to county administration for your continued support of children and families in Montgomery County. Um, additionally, thank you to the probate court, as Judge Brandon said, with 14 children, I believe, is if it's not a record, it's, it's pretty it's darn great. close. Wow. There's 14 yes. children Wonderful. adopted out there on Friday. Great. Yeah. Uh, five, 13 and older. Wow. And, wow. And, uh, wow. I believe it's eight families. So we have several sibling groups being adopted. Yeah. So Aww. they're staying together. Yeah. Oh, uh, so that's we're, great. We're excited and we appreciate mm -hmm. the, the support throughout the entire Montgomery County. Awesome. Thank well, you. we must also, I'll let you guys go ahead. No, I was just going to say thank you for the work you do. I mean, uh, you know, finding foster parents is great and important but actual adopting you know to be part of the family mm -hmm. it, it, there's just you know you're just changing lives so thank you thank mm -hmm. you Craig thank you Dodge um, great job mm -hmm. yeah. no just thank you thank you both and the need is there there's no question about it and uh, you know times are tough with a lot of families so you know I know like Commissioner Lieberman said we need wonderful foster families to be able then to you know, have the children go out and then, then hopefully then they'll find a wonderful forever home. So thank you. So may we get a, a picture with all of you? <coughs> all right. Okay. Picture day today. Picture day. <laughs> should have combed my hair. <laughs> Michael, you should have combed your hair. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. Face -face. I don't want to say anything. Oh, that's a little bit better.
Absolutely. 937-224-5437. That's 937-224-KIDS. That'll ring the main number at Children's Services, and there'll be a series of prompts. I uh, can direct you to foster care and adoption licensing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What is next? <laughs> it's time to move to the next. And the next exciting topic is our county engineer. Good afternoon, commissioners, administrators, ladies and gentlemen. We have just one item for your consideration today. Resolution 22-1660 to advertise for the Germantown Middletown Pike Bridge Reconstruction Project in German Township at an estimated cost of $950,000. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Common Police Court. Thank you, commissioners. Under the Common Police Court, we have Resolution 1661 authorizing a price agreement with BI Incorporated for electronic home monitoring services for various county departments through May 1st, 2027. We also have a late item, Resolution 1693, accept a grant from the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services for automated case management in the amount of $143,515.05. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Probate court. Judge Under, Brandon, are you going to say it? Judge, would you like to read your? Come on up, Judge. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> I thought you were here, maybe. You're here, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Under the probate court, Judge David uh, D. Brannon, probate judge, um, resolution 1662, select the bid and authorize an agreement with BIS Digital Inc. for an audio visual recording system at the lowest and best bid of $387,032.60 for a one-year term. We also have Resolution 1663, authorizing renewal option with Tiberia Development Group, Inc. for software and services to extend the existing e-filing system in the amount not to exceed 44000 through December 31st, 2022. Move to approve. Hmm, let me think. Should I? <laughs> I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Juvenile court. Thank you, commissioners. <clears throat> On behalf of Administrative Judge Anthony Catizzi, we have two items today. 22-1664, accept a grant from the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services for the electronic check-in and docket display system, tablets, display stands, and other necessary equipment in the amount of $31,920.82. And another grant for 22-1665, accept a grant extension from the Office of Justice Programs at the U.S. Department of Justice for the Drug Treatment Court in the amount of $206,649.26. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You know, the, the Drug Treatment Court has yes. been so great. And in fact, I got a call from the state yesterday because other counties would like to replicate it. So they'll probably be getting phone calls. We have, we have lots of yeah, and also, will you invite the judge to come one, to one of our meetings before the end of the year so that we can thank him and say goodbye? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, our county administrator. Thank you, commissioners. Under the county administrator on the clerk's office, we have approved the minutes of the meetings on November 8th, 2022. Resolution 1666, approval of bills, and resolution 1667, approval of travel and expenses. Both those lists are available in the clerk's office. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Administrative services. Good afternoon, commissioners. We have a number of resolutions for your consideration today, beginning with 1668. This is the approval of personnel actions. 
this list is available in the clerk's office. 1669 authorizes an agreement with Standard Insurance Company for group life and accidental death and dismemberment insurance, supplemental life insurance, and short-term disability insurance through December 31st of 2023 with options to renew. 1670 authorizes a grant agreement with the Ohio Emergency Management Agency for funds made available under the Ohio State Emergency Response Commission Hazardous Materials Emergency Preparedness Grant in the amount of $102,879.20 through September 29th of 2023. 1671 extends the agreement with Sedgwick Claims Management Services Incorporated for property casualty, third party claims, uh, third party claims for the risk, safety, and emergency management department at a cost not to exceed $34,137.62 through October 31st of 2023. 1672 authorizes a sole source purchase from Central Square for annual maintenance and software support for the Environmental Services Department in an amount not to exceed $132,673.54. 1673 authorizes the repair of a 2021 Titan Tipper trailer by Ken's Truck Repair Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $81,452. 1674 rejects the proposals for a hazmat vehicle for the Risk, Safety, and Emergency Management Department and re-advertise. 1675 submits a grant application to the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction for the Jail Capital Improvement Project in an amount of $50 million. Uh, 1676 appoints the Montgomery County Local Emergency Planning Committee voting members, chairperson, vice chairperson, information coordinator, and emergency coordinator effective October 14th of 2022. The following four resolutions solicit bids for the Environmental Services Department. Uh, beginning with 1677 for an autonomous camera system, 1678 for electronics recycling services, 1679 for scrap tire recycling services, and last is 1680 for water treatment chemicals for Southwest Ohio purchasers for government. In the last three resolutions, authorized technical services agreements for Justice Web Interactions and reports through December 31st of 2023. The first is 1681 with Butler County Adult Probation Department with a revenue not to exceed $5,000. 1682 uh, with Butler County Children's Services with a revenue not to exceed $25,000. And last is 1683 with Butler County Area Courts Probation Department with a revenue not to exceed $5,000. Mm -hmm. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Environmental Services. Good afternoon, Commissioners. For environmental services, we have resolution 1684, submit an application to participate in the Ohio Water Development Authority, OWDA, local government agency loan program for a loan in the amount of $689,405 and to authorize a cooperative agreement for implementation of the Dorothy Water Main Replacement Project. We're pulling resolution 1685. In resolution 1686, solicit a request for qualifications for consultant services for the lead service line replacements project. The following two are to amend agreements. 1687 with Fishbeck Inc. for the concrete tank rehabilitation Eastern Regional Phase 3 project by extending the term through December 31st, 2023. In resolution 1688 with Tank Industry Consultants for the new water storage planning project by extending the term through December 31st, 2025. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Human Services. Thank you. We have resolution 1689, which is to amend the interagency agreement between the Children's Services Division and the Sheriff's Office for Criminal Justice Information by amending the termination date to automatically renew annually unless terminated by either party. Resolution 1690, authorized the Department of Job and Family Services Family Assistance Division to transfer kinship caregiver funds to the Children's Services Division for calendar year 2023. I move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Business Services. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Under Business Services, Resolution 1691 accepts the donation from the Paint It Forward campaign to receive painting services at the Animal Resource Center at no cost to the county. Oh. Move for approval. And tell us about that. That's yeah. pretty that's That is, uh, we were nominated by, uh, let's see, her name is Jenny Jasper, who I've not met, from HLE Coatings, uh, and they do a, a regional campaign, and basically they give uh, $5,000 of painting services to three 
worthy causes and one of the workers there nominated us. Mm -hmm. We're gonna paint the outside sign, outside wall, interior lobby, which is pretty big. Mm -hmm. uh, it's $5,000 <coughs> worth of painting services. Excellent. That's great. Good. Good. Okay, I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, county commissioners, we have a hearing on uh, the free Pike Bridge Rehabilitation Project. As commissioners, uh, David Shields is our project manager on this project and will be giving a presentation. Mr. Shields, if you'll raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the statements you're about to make will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, on penalty of perjury? I do. Thank I you. Do. Good afternoon, Commissioners, Administrator. Uh, it's my pleasure to present to you the Free Pike Bridge Repair Project in the city of Trotwood. In the city of Trotwood, Free Pike is also known as East Main Street. As you can see here, the uh, project is located uh, immediately adjacent to the intersection with State Route 49 on Free Pike, uh, just north of Wolf Creek Pike, and to the east of Olive Road. Here's an aerial view of the, uh, of the intersection where the project is located. This is a, um, a, a twin cell concrete cast in place structure over, that spans over dry run. The project was built in 1977. As I said, it is a two span cast in place concrete frame structure. The project goal is to repair the existing structural damage and loss of backfill behind the structure due to scour underneath the bridge. Uh, this bridge was closed uh, for emergency purposes this year due to a loss of backfill resulting in settlement of the pavement and uh, which could have potentially led to damage to property or injury to the public. The project scope includes repair of the existing structure, uh, restoration of backfill behind the structure walls, replacement of pavement, installation of waterproofing on the structure and installation of scour measures, scour prevention measures to prevent this from happening in the future. Uh, here are a couple pictures of the existing site conditions. On the left you can see, uh, it's a little difficult to see from this angle, but there is settlement in the pavement, which is why I included the picture on the right. Uh, there is a string line, unfortunately due to the angle of the camera, the string line is hardly visible, but it runs right along the bottom of the guardrail which uh, indicates that there's approximately three and a half inches of settlement at that location of the pavement. And this was again due to scour underneath the structure, leading to loss of backfill behind the wall and thus resulting in settlement of the structure, or of the pavement. Here's a picture of the inside of the structure. Uh, this is the damage that has resulted in the settlement at the top, uh, top surface. On the left, you can see there's an orangish colored area uh, that is the vertical edge of one of the box sections, the precast box, <coughs> cast in place box sections that has dropped down approximately six inches in that location. And on the right, you can see damage to the foundation in that area. There is one impacted property on this project. It is on the north side of the structure. Uh, it is owned by Dennis R. and Teresa Denlinger. Uh, <clears throat> this is a temporary acquisition for the purpose of construction of the project. The acquisition is 0 0.279 acres of temporary easement on the north side of the road and is necessary for access under the bridge during construction. This is a street level view of the affected property. <coughs> project costs. Uh, as usual, the county engineer's office will be performing in-house <coughs> construction inspection and engineering services. Uh, right-of-way, uh, once this project is approved, we will begin the right-of-way acquisition process and the costs for right-of-way will be determined by appraisal. We currently are engaged with a consultant to um, develop design-build scope documents and that cost the cost for those services is $65,051. Construction is estimated to be approximately $576,450 for a total project cost of $641,501. Uh, 
as mentioned, we are already underway with our design build documents, but the remainder of the project schedule, right of way acquisition will begin immediately after uh, the closure of the hearing, uh, beginning this month and hopefully wrapping up in January of 2023. Advertisement and award will begin immediately after right of way acquisition, starting in January 23, and award in approximately February of 2023. And design of the project and construction will begin in the spring and end in the fall of next year, 2023. Uh, any questions? Uh, Commissioner, we're doing this as a design build project to get it done as soon as possible so that as, as soon as uh, we get the right of way, we'll be able to advertise and select a team of designers and <coughs> contractors so that they can finish it quickly. Yeah, we're, we start uh, being close. It's affecting quite a few people. It is. Okay, I move to close the public hearing and determine that the project is needed and the safety, convenience, and welfare for the traveling public requires the free Pike Bridge Rehabilitation Project in the City of Trotwood and recognize it is also necessary to facilitate the right of the public to improvement and maintenance of and uninterrupted travel to county roads pursuant to Chapter 5553 of the Ohio Revised Code and authorize the county engineer to proceed with right-of-way negotiations. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank All right. You. Now we have uh, comments by citizens, and we have three sheets here. So the first would be um, Liz Kent. <coughs> you, have, you make comments. Come to the podium, uh, state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Kent. Um, I am a new transplant from Cuyahoga County up north with my husband Welcome. and family. Welcome. And we live at 10149 Washington Church Road in Miami Township. Okay. And I have some documents for, for all of you here. Um, because the website said make sure there are five sets. So, so you have something you can refer to. Um, and I'll begin quickly here because I know I have three minutes. So um, esteemed commissioners and at all, as a new resident to Montgomery County since August 17th and specifically residing at 10149 Washington Church Road in Miami Township, we have been <laughs> unsuccessful in getting our sewer easement lot back to usable condition. We discovered that one to two years ago, the County Environmental Services Department had brought heavy equipment onto the property to repair or maintain the sewer. Oh. Last month during our first time on that side of the new property, because it was very overgrown, uh, we brush hogged a lot of the overgrowth until the brush hog stopped working. Uh, it hit one of many large ruts that are not only unsightly, but actually quite dangerous. Um, we are unable to use that lot. It's actually not really safe to walk around in. Uh, you will see pictures attached of the ruts so that you, you know how this looks, and it's really not very, it's not tillable, and it's not workable, and, and the ruts are deep. So the, the pictures don't really do it justice. You kind of have to come and see for yourself. The Environmental Services Department says that they will not spend the short amount of time with a backhoe to restore the land to its previous state. They have admitted, however, that their department was responsible for the condition. The tire ruts even exist on property that is not covered by the easement, which is a breach of the easement deed, which is attached to that uh, packet you have. As you can see, it is the condition of the grant, it's the grantee's responsibility, which is the government, to restore the ground to its original condition once the work is done. So we are imploring you uh, as the county commissioners of Montgomery County to do one of two things. Number one, either please direct the appropriate parties at the Environmental Services Department to simply fix our land. For us to even walk on the property is dangerous and could result in an injury and we don't want to go down that road. Or number two, please reimburse us for the cost of hiring a contractor to backhoe it and level it out and um, reduce our land taxes for the inconvenience of that. So we appreciate you. We thank you for giving consideration to our unfortunate situation. And we really want to have a mutually agreeable resolution to this uh, problem. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Kent, 
if you could, after we're, uh, Matt Hilliard is going to meet with you. He's our director of environmental services. All right. And that we can look into this. Excellent. Uh, we have not acknowledged that we have created any trenches or any ruts in the property. However, we'll look into this, and then Matt will meet with you, and we'll get back with you. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Kemp. Thank you. And next is Charles Kemp. Hello. Hello. Well, first I'd like to say about adoption, wonderful project. I adopted four kids, special needs. Oh, wow. Wonderful kids. Oh, thank you. I'd do it again awesome. if I had to. Um, but again, with the, the sewer easement, um, I did talk to Charles Schaefer, okay. and I talked to um, Megan O'Malley, who they all came out, they looked at the property, they said, yep, something's been done. We don't know what department, we're not doing it. Um, I went to my neighbor, he says, oh yeah, they came out They came out year, year and a half, or two ago, they came out with a bulldozer, they came out with a brush hog, and they brush hogged it all between the two sewers. They said, oh, some other department. There's no other, we had oops come out, no other department has any easements there. <coughs> so it was the county that did it, and the problem is it's, this whole thing just blew up. I mean, I've called everybody, I'm surprised, you know, most of you have probably seen my email, but, you know, two hours with a backhoe would fix this whole thing. Um, no idea where to go. No idea who to talk to anymore. Um, I was the one out there with a brush hog. I busted the brush hog because of the ruts. Um, I told them, go talk to my neighbors. I told Charles Schaefer, go talk to my neighbor. I told Verify, oh, I'm not talking to him. I don't have to talk to him. I'm not doing that. So I'm like, okay. Then I said, well, what if I fix it? My well, if you fix it yourself, you have to be careful. Because you break anything, this you're, you're going to be in trouble. So, but it's your problem. I'm fixing your issue. And he says, well, "We're not doing it. You, you just have to be very, very careful what you do because if not, we're gonna, you know we're coming after you." I was like, "Well, how is that fair to me? They can come in, and I know that that land was not like that before because the previous owner cut that grass back there. So it was flat, or she would never been able to cut it." Um, all I'm looking for in my wife is someplace safe where our kids can play, dogs can play, kids running around, and not get hurt. That's, that's all I'm asking for. And I, I don't see it happening. I, you know, the, count, the county mission is to support their citizens. The environmental service is not. They are telling me, well, yeah, we did something. We don't know who did it, to be exact, but stuff it. We're not going to help you. And, and to me, that's just wrong. You know, we're a citizen. It doesn't matter whose department did it. It's been done. Let's just fix it. I don't mm -hmm. see what the problem is with that. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Thank Kent. You. Thank you. I, I, think, I think you and you and, uh, and Ms. Kent, again, meeting with Matt, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And our final is Marion Perry. Good afternoon. My name is Marion Perry. Well, wait till you get up here. If you can help me, I'd like to ask you to explain my problem. Okay. Oh, can we cast? We can't. I don't know that we can cast, so. You can. You can show it. My name is Marion Perry. I live and grew up at the house I live in, which is 5140 Altram Road. I have some neighbors that were told to move, I guess by the landlord, and we waited and waited because they caused the community, the street I live on, a lot of problems. Nobody who wants to do anything outside can go outside in peace. I can't even go outside. I'm afraid. And I hate to say that, but I have no choice to tell you that. The people who moved back are the owners of, let's see, I was told four male pit bulls and one female pit bull. The reason being is, if I go up the street, I go on the other side, on the side I live on. I can't go on the other side because if I do and they see me out, a dog is going to be let loose and use some ice. 
There are 10 people on my street, all of us suffer from a chronic issue. People say, call the sheriff. We have called the sheriff, all of us. Nothing gets done, nobody shows up. <clears throat> they move back. They've got a lot of tires in the front yard, well, in their, their backyard, but if you're walking up, you cannot miss it. There's a lot of truck tires, point one. Point two, there's a lot of trash around. Point three, there's another neighbor, a lawyer, who did a quick claim deed per a house of a resident who passed on. His daughter wanted it out of her name, so the lawyer bought it. I have to call him and tell him they're trashing your yard again, the backyard. He's cleaned it up, he's trying to get it ready. Like most people who have houses out there, get it ready to sell it or rent it. But I don't think when they find out what they have to live next to, everything is about neighbors. In the community I live in, you either have good ones or bad ones. These are worse than bad. Like I said, I ride a bus. I don't have a car. The only way I get somewhere is if I ask somebody to take me, I got to do this. I live on a fixed income. I can't do that. All I'm saying is, I am asking somebody to come out and have a look. I've even called the sheriff. I've called everybody I can call. They are not there to protect us. We, the township people, are getting tired of this. When you call, it takes them a while to respond. I'm just at the point, all of us are at the point of taking our own law in our hands. Because in January when I get a gun, you're gonna hear it on the news. I'm tired, I'm just that tired. Right now, I have to walk around with a stun gun to protect me. I can't walk up the street, I can't. You would never wanna live in a neighborhood like that, ever, never. Everybody in that area is, we had a slight breeze of relief when the person moved. And then by Monday, they were moving back, lock, stock, and everything. All the trash, our trash day is Wednesday, tomorrow. You should see what they put out and have what situation we have to live under. And when we vote, we vote to put people in office to take care of us. Pretty soon, Plummer will be our representative. Oh, you gotta wait until January. We don't have any representation at all. Nobody's doing nothing. Thank you. I yeah. almost saw Thank you, two people get killed, kids and a dog. Thank you, Ms. Thank Perry. You. Have a blessed day. Thank you. All right, um, next comments by our county administrator. Thank you, commissioners. Well, last Tuesday was election day and it was a big day within the county. And I'd like to personally thank our 1,600 volunteers uh, amazing it would take 1,600 people uh, to for our voting volunteers, but we have polls and precincts across our vast county, and it takes a lot of our volunteers to work those polls, so we are thankful. Uh, it also made for extremely long days. Um, we really appreciate the Board of Elections and the work that they did. The volunteers, uh, they come in at 5.45 a.m., and they serve more than 128,000 votes and 144 polling locations across our county. So that's pretty amazing work. Um, and the nearly 19,000 early voters and 40,000 absentee voters by mail were processed by 28 full-time staff and 12 uh, seasonal Board of Elections staff. So hats off to our Board of Elections. They did a fantastic job. I'd also like to thank our printing services team. Uh, our in-house printing services team did a great job. Uh, Tyler, please commend the team um, on the ballot printing. Uh, they print a lot of ballots for us. And I'd also like to thank our facilities team. They responded very quickly. Uh, as many of you know, we had the emergency provisions to have an emergency polling station set up in the lobby in the event something happened. Well, something yeah. happened. Yeah. We ended up with a water leak that came all the way down to the building and shut our escalators down. Mm -hmm. And uh, our facilities team was on it. Uh, they, they got power to our backup polling station. 
Uh, we were up and running in no time, and it was really a team effort. So great job, uh, our facilities team and this plumbing leak and uh, redirecting voters from the lower level to the first floor. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Michael, and, and our team. You know, every time we have the early vote, which is wonderful, um, our, our maintenance people, our whole team works together because mm -hmm. some weekends there are so many people out in that garage, it's, it's crazy. Um, but it always runs smoothly. And, it be, and it's because of all these volunteers, um, 1,600 in our county, that Ohio elections are so smooth. I mean, we can look at what's happening in the rest of the county. And in fact, I saw a funny tweet from our Secretary of State saying to um, Nevada that he's happy to share what we do and how we do it right here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to just applaud everybody. It was a pretty seamless day. There were a few glitches early in the morning with machines that for whatever reason didn't work, but uh, it's because of our investment in our county, but also in Ohio. In making sure that we have the right equipment and the right people. So. Well, Commissioner, you, I left one out. Our, our, to your point, our parking staff. Yeah. yeah. You know, our, yeah. they always make sure the gates yeah. are up yep. and they always yep. make sure everyone has a place to park. Mm -hmm. So, Tyler, police conveyor, thanks to, to Frank and his team. And so. specifically to our employees who volunteer on election day and work at the polls. I know mm -hmm. Carrie, where is Carrie still out there? Is that, there yeah. he is. Yeah. You know, and that's a long day, as Carrie can attest to, for those of you that ever worked at the polls. And it's just, you know, I encourage people to still do it because, quite honestly, a lot of the people that have done it for 30 and 40 years, they're not so excited to continue to do it. So we need to bring in more people. Yeah. Well, what I noticed is I would, if I had the opportunity, I always ask anyone, as you could tell they were finished voting, how it went. And they... To, to a person, they said this was the best it's ever been voting in our building. So that, that was a great testament to everybody. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I know one year I volunteered, and mm. I think everyone, if you get the opportunity or you have the mm -hmm. time, should step up. That gives you a deep appreciation of all the checks and balances and all of the processes are there to protect your vote and make sure we have accurate, complete um you know, elections that you can mm -hmm. have a lot of trust and confidence in. So, uh, love to see more of you next a, a election time, probably in the primary, to step up and mm -hmm. experience it. All right, well, besides that, around the nation, um, people are recognizing this week another week. We had <laughs> National Apprenticeship Week, we have Adoption, and now we have Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. And sadly, last year, about 3,400 or uh, Montgomery County households experienced homelessness. Uh, and that included 246 families with children. Just mm -hmm. think about that. And you know, I can tell you, I'm, I'm in a Rotary Club and we are starting um, to read to the children who are um, without a home and um, really trying to soften the trauma of uh, being without a home and what that does to a child and to a family and to show them that people care. So th th this number is impactful to those children for a lifetime. Um, so we all need to come together. Our Homeless Solutions Policy Board, um, which I serve on, provides strategic direction, allocates funding, and coordinates the housing crisis response system in the county with the goal of ensuring that homelessness is rare, brief, and we pray only once. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have to commend, Jerry, make sure you commend everyone on that board. Mm -hmm. Stellar, absolutely stellar the things we do, but sadly, the problem is still there. Can't imagine if we weren't doing what we do, uh, but we can always do better and none of us are satisfied until we get to zero. Um, and we are, um, I would like to announce that we're having a hygiene donation drive. So um, I know any of you who've traveled, you get the shampoos and the conditioners and the soaps and um, often bring those home. And those can be, uh, go find them in your home. You can bring them in for these individuals. Uh, so we are asking for shampoo, conditioner, soap, body wash, lotion, 
razors, shaving cream, and chapstick. One, and you go out and purchase them. I mean, mm. not just the ones you got at the hotel, but yeah. I know you yeah. have ones that are unopened. <laughs> I know you do. Everybody does if you've had the luxury of traveling, right. I should say. Um, but we uh, buy some, bring them in to share with others with less. And there are three drop-off locations. The Ribold building on the fifth floor. Um, on this building, right out in the hallway, 10th floor of this building, you'll see the big box for that. And at Dayton City Hall on the third floor. So there's three locations that you can take them to. And uh, there will be additional activities that uh, our human services planning and development uh, team has um, planned, and that is at mcohio.org. And I encourage everyone, absolutely everyone, you know, we've said it more than once, if everybody did one small thing, if everybody did one thing, what a difference that would add up to be. So if you could dig down and um, <coughs> just even spend one dollar, five dollars, whatever it is, and brought it in. Can you imagine if everyone in the county did that? How far that would go. So um, keep these individuals and their families in your hearts this week um, as we, uh, as a nation, uh, come together to, I don't want to say celebrate, that's not the right word, but recognize. to recognize and care about and lift up mm -hmm. those who are homeless and make our awareness of the situation uh, even greater than it is today. So that's my two cents for today. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. And just to reiterate, every day this week there are activities, and just go to the website and you can see. Um, but one of the things that we're doing to um, promote the recognition is our building is orange. And if anybody has seen that in the last few days, it at first I was like, is that orange? But the closer you get, it's orange. Last week it was green for our veterans, um, but orange this week. And then on Thursday is, we're, and we're encouraging everyone to go orange on Awareness Day, and that is on Thursday. Um, you can get involved just by simply wearing orange. And we're asking that a selfie, somebody take a selfie or take a picture with your coworkers or and then post that to social media and you can post it to Montgomery County social media sites. Um, and then on Friday, there's an opportunity to donate children's books to St. Vincent de Paul Gateway Shelter for women and families. That's the one, the South, St. Vincent de Paul. Um, so, and that's gonna be for their community library that they're opening, which is pretty exciting. And um, they do have a, an Amazon wish list for books that their library would like to have. And that can also be found on our website under the Human Services Planning and Development page at mcohio.org. Oh, okay. Well, you. I guess it's my turn. Okay, well, guess what? Last week we had our 12th annual Food Summit. And um, I think it was a great turnout, and I think hopefully everybody learned a lot. And um, we really appreciate the local businesses, nonprofits, and individuals who make such profound efforts to fight hunger in our community while reducing waste. The need is still so great in our county, but I want you to know that we are trying to make a big difference. And this goes along with the homelessness and the hunger. You know, there's still so many of our individuals that are just living day to day what they're going to do tomorrow. So, um, and I have to say that we're not going to be here next Tuesday. So, Wednesday, the 23rd, the Miami Valley Meals is having a um, takeaway meals, turkey takeaway meals. And they're going to be, that's Wednesday, the 23rd, at Trotwood Madison High School from 9 a.m. to noon at the University of Dayton Arena, 9 a.m. to 12, Omega Baptist Church, 12 to 3, Boys and Girls Club of Dayton, 12 to 3, and Fairborn Phoenix from 12 to 3. So there's a lot of places in, safe, in case someone needs a good, wonderful, I was there, help you prepare have them. It, right. It's a mm -hmm. wonderful dinner. Spectre. So if you need the a turkey turkeys, dinner, those the are turkey. the places to go. So um, thank you. And that, too, it will be on our website, correct? Yes. Yeah, so we can link to that. Yeah. Um, and I just want to congratulate you, uh, Commissioner, on a 
another successful food summit. Oh, thank you, you and your team and our partners. Um, yeah, it was just great. did an excellent job. You. you know, every year that grows, and to see mm -hmm. all the people in that room at Sinclair in the big, you know, Building Twelve, that um, care about hunger in our yeah. community it was really, of course. Um, Ambassador Tony Hall was there, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you right. recognized some hunger heroes this year. Yeah, so that was nice yeah, too. thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was very special. It was yeah. very nice. Well, thank thank you. you. And we got to learn in the trivia. Yeah. Do any of you know what the number one side dish in Ohio is? I learned this. I bet you all know. I do now. Green bean casserole. Can you believe that? Yeah. I, I was I like, can. of course, everybody of course knows. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm not Joanna taking away all from all together. the wonderful comments, yeah, but I'm fun. just saying the trivia was <clears throat> going to stick with me as well. Yeah. I learned about food and cultures and yeah. all of that. Just it was the theme. So, Well, Judy did uh, indicate that we are not, mm -hmm. not going to be meeting next Tuesday, November 22nd, because it's a very special week. Um, it's Thanksgiving week. And I know on behalf of all of us here at the county, uh, we are grateful for this community and all the many people uh, that do so much and uh, let us all wrap our arms around those who are our family and friends and be grateful for that and reach out to those who are challenged at this time so no one gets left out. Uh, this is truly a, a time to remember and uh, think of one another. And um, so we will not be meeting next week, but I hope each and every one of you will be having a wonderful week and that our community will come for you if you're in difficult times and put a smile on your face somehow, some way. Uh, but our next meeting shall be Monk, uh, on Tuesday, November 29th at 1.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned and have a wonderful, wonderful two weeks. Stay safe and be good.